is our God. Sing it with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. above all names, name above all names, and he's worthy of all praise, so my heart will sing how great is our God, oh his name, his name. the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord. That's when we're going to do the key of E flat. Praise God. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice. is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. So celebrate 
shake in the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Well, I pray in the presence of the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Once again, celebrate in the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Celebrate in the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Oh, let's rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. Blessed be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Your great name. Amen. Praise God. Lost or saved, find their way at the sound of your great name. Feel no shame at the sound of your great name. Every fear has no place at the sound. to flee that's right at the sound of your great name oh Jesus worthy is our lamb that was slain for us he's the son of God and man you are high and lifted up and all the world slain. He's the son of God and man. You are high lifted up and all the world will praise. We'll praise your name. Oh, hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Worthy is the lamb that was. He was slain. The Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great name. Oh, once again, all the weak, all the weak, they find their strength at the sound of your great Your great name, the fatherland. 
Son of God, Amen. You are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great name. Oh, hallelujah! Key of F, brother, Key of F. Well, it's in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, even does victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. Tell me who can stand before us when we call upon his great name. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, we have the pick. Come on, I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got the Holy Ghost. Just like the Bible says, I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Just like the Bible says, well, I've been to that water and I've been, yes, I have. My soul got happy and I'm satisfied. And you know, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. Just like the Bible, just like the Bible, just like the Bible said. Once again, I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Just like the Bible says, I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Just like the Bible said, well, I've been. Water and I've been baptized. My soul got happy and I'm satisfied. Amen. And I wouldn't take it nothing for my journey now. Just like the Bible, just like the Bible, just like the Bible says. Oh, let's clap our hands. Let's lift our voices. Come on, we have a lot to give praise and thanks for in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Amen and amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. While you're standing, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. We can have confidence in God that we serve, praise God. And so tonight, if you have needs, let me just, at least, just take an opinion poll here tonight. You got something that you need the Lord to do for you? Okay, why don't you raise the other hand in faith now along with that and just make that known to him in Jesus' name. Come on, he's good. He's awesome. There's nobody like him in Jesus' name. That's it. We can have confidence, and we should have confidence in God. Come on, the Bible says that he can do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think. So, folks, I'm telling you something. You're in the right place. You're worshiping the right God. You can have confidence in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's just give him, oh, just enough time right now. Let's just make those requests known unto him. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, I do. I believe that God can do anything. There's faith in this place tonight. Come on, let's just let let's just let that faith begin to grow for just about a minute. Can we do that? 
Come on, let's just let that faith grow for a minute. Come on, something's happening here. If you need the Holy Ghost, you can get it right here tonight. If you have a healing that needs to take place, I believe that God's healing power is right here. Right here in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. What an awesome God we serve. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. That's it. Come on, that's it. We can have confidence and faith in God. Confidence and faith in the Lord in Jesus' name. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Why don't you high-five a couple of people and say, you know, my God does it. My God can do it. Amen in Jesus' name. Praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, and you can be seated tonight. Tonight we're going to um, go back to um, something we've been doing for a while, and that is, of course, discipleship class. And probably, um, uh, I don't know if you brought your books tonight or not, but you can write some of this stuff down. So when you find your book or get your book, you can go ahead and write it in. Um, I know this has been kind of a, a, a back and forth type of a summer, which normally that's how it works. Um, uh, Lori, I th you got the Holy Ghost last Wednesday night, didn't you? How's it working? Is it still there? Is it still there? Yeah. It'll never leave. Never leave. Never leave. That's awesome. Praise God. That is awesome. She got the Holy Ghost last Wednesday night in our supposed to be children's crusade, which it was. I mean, we're all children of the king. And so that was cool. That was really neat. Um, Sunday night, wasn't that neat? See somebody getting baptized in Jesus' name, and then before they get out of the water, they're speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Folks, that's, that's, that is awesome. That is a good thing, praise God. And we want to keep that, amen, going. And I believe that God wants to help us to do that in Jesus' name. Take your Bibles tonight, if you've got one. Um, and we're going to... Um, Oops, got to point it that way, yeah. And we're going to look into some scripture here tonight. Um, this series of lessons has to do with um, uh, the idea of abundant, which is the name of our church, by the way. And we're going to talk about abundant faith if we have time. Um, next week we'll talk about contentment, which is really a good lesson. I, I hope we can get to that. We'll talk about abundant love, and we'll talk about abundant hope. Abundant life, I think that's what God wants us to to have and feel and sense in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're going to talk about abundant faith. Um, that it seems like we have been talking about the subject of faith quite a bit here of late, and I don't believe that is an accident. I believe that God is just trying to help us to expand our faith into a, what I would consider a, um, a, um, a faith that can, that can bring some things to pass in Jesus' name. Um, Look at Matthew chapter number 8, verse number 23 is where I will start. You can go there if you want. This is a story that's uh, in, re in reference to Jesus. This is one of the storms that the Bible talks about. Let's just listen and ask the Lord to, um, to talk to us tonight about some of the storms that possibly you're going through. Scripture says, and when he was entered into a ship, everybody say a ship. It says his disciples followed him. And behold, what does that mean? Yeah, we better. It says, there arose a great tempest, a great one, in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. That's a pretty good storm. It says, but he was asleep, that's Jesus, and his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish, or we're going to die. That's another rendition of this, I think, is in Mark and literally they say that, are you going to let us die? And it says, and he saith unto them, why are you fearful, O ye of, what kind of faith? Yeah. Now, I don't want to, I'm certainly here not to put anybody down who has little faith here tonight. But um, little faith a lot of times isn't going to accomplish some of the things that we need to get accomplished. And so we need to get into a place where we can have um, a little bigger faith. It says, O ye of little faith. Then he arose, Jesus, and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. The scripture says, but the men marveled. They were surprised. I don't know if they didn't think Jesus could do that. 
or if maybe this was just some, the first time they'd ever seen it happen. I don't know. But that word marveled there means that they were surprised. You know, I've been around Pentecostal apostolic churches for quite a while now, and I've seen people show that kind of an emotion too when God does something. And I'm not saying I haven't had it before, but I want to get to a place where I'm not surprised. We talked about this Sunday night, remember? Let's come to the, to the house of God with expectation, knowing that God can do it and believing him in Jesus' name. The Bible says, they marveled at saying, what manner of man is this even that even the winds and the sea obey him? Can you say amen? Look at Psalms 56. Let's go there, and like I said, we'll get our scriptural fix in our compass here. Amen. The story is told that they were in a storm and Jesus was asleep. They got him up and he just stood up and rebuked the winds and that storm and it came to a calm. That's quite a deal, isn't it? 56th Psalm and verse number 3. What time I am afraid, it says. Psalm 56 and verse 3. What time I am afraid, it says, I will trust in thee. Praise God. Does anybody here want to trust in the Lord a little more than maybe a half? Why don't you go ahead and lift that hand again while you're sitting and ask the Lord to help you. I think a lesson like this can do that. I think it can give us some great ideas, give us some direction. Lord Jesus, right now, Lord God, good folks sitting here tonight, I believe that your will is for everyone here to grow. I don't think anybody here has to walk out of here ashamed or thinking that you don't really care for them. I think that everybody here can receive your love and your power and your strength. And Lord God, right now, I pray for that. I pray for it. It'll begin to expand in Jesus' name. Let our faith, Lord God, be in you especially. And also, Lord God, you know, help us, Lord Jesus, to just receive with meekness this engrafted word that is able to save our souls. And I give you the praise and the glory. And everybody say in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. So we can do this. We can do this. Praise God. God can help us, and I believe that he will. Amen. Um, you know, one of the things that you see here in this portion of Scripture, you begin to see this as the, as the Gospels um, go on, is that ministry is happening. Jesus was 24-7. Well, I shouldn't say that. He slept, and he, of course, went up into mountains at times and, and had to get away from, from the hustle and the bustle. But on the most part, every day there was something happening in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Isn't that something? It's hard for us to imagine that, you know, especially with our cultural settings that we have where we have church. Um, I mean, and we're considered radicals. We're considered um, um, people who are, are um, fanatics because we have church three times a week. Um, most denominal churches are doing away with services, and, and I, I'm not for that myself, but the bottom line is, you know, with our schedules, it's hard, you know, because we go about doing our own things, but I really do feel like if we can get back into the groove, if we can get back into um, allowing God to become more of a part of our life, praise God. Uh, in today's Bible study, I was teaching a group of students, and one of the things that I, I told them is I said that God has got opportunities for us all the time. There are opportunities that God has. And the first thing we need to do is we need to begin to see those opportunities. In fact, I'm going to pray for every one of you here tonight, if you're led to do that, that you will begin to see the opportunities that God is putting in your life to grow. And then I pray that you will take those opportunities because that, that still doesn't guarantee after you see things that you're going to do it. That doesn't guarantee anything. It means that you, you, now you can begin to see things and I pray that God will help you with that. Would you bow your heads, Father, in the name of Jesus? I thank you for a group like this. I do feel hunger here. I feel sincerity. I feel that there are people that are honestly, Lord God, just looking for what you want for them in their lives. And Lord God, tonight I believe in a setting like this, your revelation can be in this place very, very, very um, powerfully. And I do expect that to happen. I pray that every eye will be opened. In fact, Lord God, that is my prayer right now, that their eyes will be enlightened. 
their spiritual eyes will be literally opened up that they can begin to see you, Lord God, and begin to see the opportunities that you are right now, today, putting in their lives. And I pray, Lord God, for that one that's discouraged right now, that they will begin to take those opportunities and watch and see what the Lord will do in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it in advance, Lord God, and I give you the praise and glory. Can everybody say in Jesus' name? All right, thank you for letting me pray for you. Amen. Now, one of the things... Um, I've never been to that part of the world, but they tell me in the Sea of Galilee that it's just uh, uh, kind of a natural thing, especially during the summer months, that uh, sudden storms can come up. Uh, the way it's positioned and the hills that are around it, they say that a lot of times, um, you know, they, that people just don't get any warning, that all of a sudden it just comes in, just sweeps in. And definitely at this point in time, um, uh, with the apostles and or the disciples crossing the sea there with Jesus, this is literally what happened. A storm just came in very, very, very quickly. And um, and uh, how, has anybody ever been in a storm like that? I mean, a storm that just all of a sudden, I mean, it just seemed like one minute it wasn't there and, and the next minute it wasn't. Have you ever been in a storm like that? Yeah, yeah. I remember one time when we were out at Keyhole and we were having, serv or not services, but we had a picnic out there. And um, um, and we were out in, in a boat fishing, you know, doing some things like that. And all of a sudden, and I mean, it just seemed like within minutes, there was a wind that came over that, that lake out there. And I mean, tell you folks, we barely got off of that lake, you know. And so I, I, I remember, I can remember that feeling. I can remember that being scared and going, whoa, this is not something I'd like to do every day, you know. Um, and, you know, we talk about the physical storm Sunday night. You know, while we were in service here, there was a storm that came through here, and they say there was actually a tornado that touched down in, on the east part of town. You know, um, wasn't it something we never, I never, I was oblivious to the whole thing. I didn't even know what was going on. You know, <laughs> that's something, isn't it? You know, but what I more in particular think about tonight when I think about storms is stuff that's going on in your life right now. Amen, that there's people even sitting in here right now that, you know, it's, it's, it's quite, a, quite a storm that's going on, you know. I, I got to have to say myself, and I won't go into any details, um, but uh, the last couple of weeks in my life, ministerial life, it seems like there's been some storms that have blown in and that type of thing. But isn't it neat to know that you can get through those things, that the anchor does hold, praise God. Come on, I'm telling you something. This, I've... I, I'm learning, and I hope that some of you are learning, too, that God, just like in this scenario here, God sometimes isn't going to have you avoid the storm. He's going to have you go right through the storm, praise God, because he wants you to understand how powerful he is, how he can hold and that, that type of thing. And so sometimes we have to be careful that we, you know, we want to avoid everything, praise God. And so when they were crossing that sea, because this wasn't their first rodeo, these, a, lot, a lot of these guys that were following Jesus were fishermen. They knew what the Sea of Galilee was like, and they understood that the fact that the matter is is that there could be southern, sudden storms come up. And I think this is one thing that God allows for us in our life sometimes is that he can help us to understand that, boy, it might be going great, fantastic. And all of a sudden that phone rings. Boy, there's something on the other side there that you weren't expecting, you know. But that's why, again, you know, we have to, um, we have to understand that our God does not, he doesn't leave us. He doesn't forsake us. Up there, the good news is, is that Jesus was on board that day. See, Jesus is on board. He's with you. You don't have to go looking for him. Sometimes we have a hard time seeing him, but, the, you know, the good news is, is he was there. Now, the bad news for them... <laughs> that he was sound asleep. For some reason, that storm wasn't affecting him. You know, when I read the account of the waves coming up over the bow of that, of that uh, little boat they had, and I don't think it was a really big one, you know, I mean, there had to be some serious movement going on in that boat. But it didn't seem to bother Jesus, did it? Because they had to go get him up. Now, you talk about sound asleep. Yeah, that's pretty sound asleep in my opinion. But you know, the bottom line is, is that he was there. And I want you to understand whatever you're going through right now, you can be, you can understand, praise God, that Jesus is there. Aren't you glad about that? Folks, I'm going to tell you something. That is peace. That is peace. 
And so God wants to help us to understand that. Now, as we follow the story here is what we'll do in Matthew chapter number 8. You know, the bottom line was, you know, that storm blew up and, oh, my goodness, there was just all kinds of things that were happening there. And I don't know how long it went on before he actually got up and calmed the storm. But I've been in situations like that. I'm sure you have, too, where minutes seem like hours, don't they? Yeah, I mean, they just seem like, boy, we're, what's the clock is just going really slow. But the bottom line is, you know, Jesus was there. He woke up. And the scripture says that his, his relation to them or relating to them was the fact is, why are you fearful? What's causing you to be fearful? Yeah. And sometimes this is, I believe, the, 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 um, the Bible study that God wants to give us. You know, why do, we, why do we have such fear in our lives? Somebody said that fear is literally faith in reverse. That's what it is. And we understand that there's different kinds of fear in the Bible. One, the Bible teaches us to fear the Lord. I mean, so I'm not here to extinguish or to say we shouldn't have any fear. But there's, there's some fear that God wants to, he wants to take out of our lives, praise God. And I believe in a service like here tonight, he can help you with that. I'm not talking about taking the storms away. I'm not talking about having a perfect world that you exist in, but helping you not to be quite so fearful and to understand that God really is in charge. I believe there's several of you that you're really, that's what you're seeking. You're seeking that. You want to have God in your life in a way, praise God, that you can experience something. Because the scripture says in verse 26 that after he, of course, dealt with, with the crux of the matter, the Bible says he arose and rebuked the winds, in verse 26 there, and the sea, and there was a great calm. Have you ever experienced that? Maybe something was over or, or that type of thing, and I remember sitting in the hospital here a few months back, and they were doing a procedure on my wife, and we weren't quite sure what the situation was, but, you know, I really, I was not worried. I can say that before God and, and anybody right now, but there was still a little bit of an anxiousness in my life, just a little bit of anxiousness, and I'll never forget the doctor coming out the door, and he still had his surgical clothes on. He came up to me, shook my hand, and he said, Mr. Carnahan, everything's okay. There's no blockage, you know, and I can remember that, Oh, yeah, that's okay, praise God. And, you know, I believe that t times like that, you know, we just like to bask in that, don't we? We'd like to just kind of remain in that. But the bottom line is, you know, I believe that God sometimes will give us times when we can really, really, really understand that. Verse 27 in Matthew talks about the fact that the Bible says that these men marveled at that. I made reference to that before. They were surprised that Jesus could do this, you know, that things like this could happen. Amen. You know, I'm reading a book right now where the man has passed away, but um, he was involved in our apostolic movement back in the 50s and the 60s and part of the 70s, and he's talking about some of the things that happened on a regular basis in his ministry. And boy, it's really, for the lack of a better word, it's turning my crank. I mean to tell you, it's really, really got me enthused. And, um, and, I, and I believe that God can do these things. I'm talking about blinded eyes opening up. I'm talking about the dead raising. I'm talking about, you know, um, uh, devils just absolutely leaving and, and that type of thing. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I, I just put you on notice, not here, just here, but in my own life, I'm pursuing that, praise God. God is helping my eyes to become open to the fact that sometimes we've, we've literally had the wool pulled over our eyes. We really have. That sometimes, just for the sake of some, what I call temporal relief, we don't go deep enough because God really does want to deliver us. I'm telling you, he wants to deliver us in Jesus' name. And I'm talking about, you know, from all of the, 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 the problems and, and, and the fears of life in Jesus' name. Somebody here kind of hungry for that right now? I see a few hands up, but I'm going to tell you something. I believe that God wants to do that. There's a seed here that I'm sowing, by the way. I'm sowing that seed. Lord Jesus, put that hunger in our hearts. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
that this man, this man called Jesus, he could stand on the bow of a boat and he could speak to the winds, he could speak to the weather and to the waves and say, peace, be still. And they had to be absolutely obedient, praise God, that he didn't negotiate, he just stipulated, praise God. And Lord, I believe you're returning that kind of a ministry in the apostolic ministry in Jesus' name. That Lord God, we're not going to wonder about it, we're just going to do it in faith in Jesus' name. Oh, there's a couple of people right here in this room right now. You could stand to your feet. You could claim that healing in the name of Jesus, and it's done. I'm telling you right now, in the name of Jesus. That's what faith will do, by the way. That's what faith will do. Right here, right here. Praise God. Amen. I just sensed it. I just sensed that it's, it's growing. Praise God. You're in a good atmosphere right now. You're in a good environment. Praise God. Faith is growing in this place. Come on, you can see that right now, that God is able, and he's going to do it, praise God. Come on, why don't you just take it a step further and say for me tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, ha, ha, yeah. Come on, I'm telling you right now, it's right here, right here, right now. Oh, I come against that spirit of fear. I come against the spirit of error. I commend you in the name of Jesus to let loose of her right now in Jesus' name and get out of here in the name of Jesus. That's it. Get your dirty hands off of her in the name of Jesus. That influence, that voice that she's hearing, I command it to stop right now in Jesus' name and let the powerful voice of God come in and replace that even here right now, right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, I'm telling you, it's right here. Right here, right now. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, I know you feel that. I know that you sense that. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. What do you say we give him some praise? Give him some of that joy that you have with big. <laughs> praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm looking forward to your report. Praise God. You can be seated. I'm looking forward to your report now in Jesus' name. Yes, that happened. That's gone. It was there, but now it's not anymore. And I'm not accepting that. I'm not even going to open the door for that anymore in Jesus' name. Oh, I'm telling you, that kind of power is in this place right here tonight, right here. In Jesus' name, praise God. Now, let's talk about some things that are practical because along with the, the supernatural um, uh, power of God, sometimes we just have to be practical with ourselves. Now, look up there on the screen. If you are a disciple, and you know what a disciple is, right? It's a learner, somebody who's learning how to be the way God wants them to be. You know, remember the, re the three requirements that Jesus had for being a disciple? Anybody? What was the first one? Deny yourself, pick up, and, yeah, simple requirements, but that's, that's a requirement. You must understand, Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, I'll tell you exactly how to do it. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me, okay? So if you are a disciple of Jesus, if that's a, 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 a routine in your life, which I hope it is, I hope you g develop that routine in your life. Because you need to, and so do I, okay? If you are a disciple of Jesus, following him could mean sailing into a stormy situation, as I alluded to before. Sometimes God, we want God to take them away. We want God to blow them around us. And you know, sometimes that does happen. I'm not saying that that isn't possible with God, but sometimes God says, let's just find out how deep the anchor is. Let's see how much faith you have in me. And it's not like he's testing himself. He's testing us. He's wanting us to see it, praise God. And so first of all, we've got to recognize the fact that we are going to go through storms. It's going to happen. You know, one of the things about our culture today is that we, we expect God to take all the pain away. And we've got to understand that pain is the will of God. Pain, a lot of times, is the thing that will help us to understand that there's something wrong. You know, and I'm not just talking about physical pain. I'm talking about emotional pain. I'm talking about even spiritual pain. And so we got to understand that, you know, we can glean from our modern day storms. And again, I'm not talking about what happened here Sunday night over in the east of town, but I'm talking about situations in your life right now. 
things that you can't take care of, praise God. I have a note that I, I read again tonight when I was here. I have it up here so that I'll see it. And this is the note that I, I wrote to myself. And this is, this day I receive from you, I say this to Jesus, this day I receive from you grace, mercy, and peace. I receive that from God every day. I do. And you want to know why? For without you, I can do nothing. It's that simple. I can't do it without him. And so I've gotten to a place in my life, and it's, it's growing, and I'm thankful for that, that I depend on him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And I'm glad to be a part of that group. It doesn't bother me to depend on God. He has shown to me time after time after time, and I'm sure with some of you too, that he is faithful. Come on, he is faithful. And so being led into a storm with God is one thing. Being led into the storm without God is another. And so you and I, we don't have to worry about that, praise God. And so God wants us to know that sometimes he's going to lead us into situations that are going to demand that we have a deep faith in God. And I don't think that's okay, you know. Now, I, I've talked about this, and I know many of you probably have the notes to this, but I did a little research a while back and the word feeling in the Bible. And this is a lot of times what we operate under, our feelings. And I'm not saying we can deny our feelings, but the feelings are like our flesh. Sometimes you just got to say, not now. Not now. I'm going to deal with something a whole lot better. But feelings in the Bible, feeling or feelings, is only found nine times in the Bible. But the word faith in the New Testament is found over 204, I think 246 times in the New Testament. Now, you tell me what God is really emphasizing. And so, you know, we can't deny it, but faith is what is going to accomplish things in the kingdom of God. Your feelings, a lot of times, is what's going to get you into trouble. And that's why I'm not saying that you shouldn't have any feelings, but recognize those feelings. Recognize them for what they are, okay? And so we must understand God is going to have us to sail into a storm. Second of all, second of all, Faith is tested when our life is out of control. That's when faith can really, really, really begin to, or we can begin to see, where am I at in the kingdom of God, you know? Is this something that, that, that I need to work on? Is this something that I need to find myself getting more faith? You know, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you can read your Bible and, and not just reading your Bible, but beginning to believe in that Bible, and you can begin to gather more faith. Your faith can begin to expand, you know. You can get into some of these storms that at one time maybe used to blow you away. But now all of a sudden you can stand very calm in that storm and recognize that God's going to not only get me through it, but I'm going to be a whole lot better off when I get on the other side in Jesus' name. Now, come on, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not, this is not a pipe dream, folks. This is exactly what God wants to do, praise God. Now, the Scripture teaches us very simply in Hebrews 11 and 1. Can anybody quote that Scripture? Faith is the evidence of things not seen. You know, it's a substance. Faith is something, praise God. That's why the Bible says that we walk by faith. Isn't that what Brother Cannon said last Wednesday night? If you want to receive the Holy Ghost, you know, you got to learn to walk by faith. And wasn't it neat to see these children just come right down to this altar? There wasn't any, any intimidation for most of them. You know, that's the way it is. Praise God. Amen. And, and this little bit older child over here, come down and get it. Praise God. Isn't that cool? See, folks, that's what it is. We don't walk by sight. That's what the Bible says. We walk by faith. And that's why God will lead us into a storm and he will say, listen, your faith will help you to get through this because faith begins to trust. It begins to trust in God. And trust in what? That God is in control. Now, come on, folks. I'm telling you that right here tonight, praise God. God is in control. Amen. Oh, come on. Look at somebody and say, God is in control. Come on. I'm telling you, folks, that is the truth. I don't care what it looks like from the natural standpoint. Come on, I'm telling you, it looks good from the spiritual standpoint. You've heard me say this before. Let me just throw this little blip in here. You know, in the Old Testament, they had the tabernacle, okay? And there were three kinds of light, you know? And you must understand that the first light was the natural light. 
that was in when you walked through that 30-foot gate. There it was. There was an area there called the outer court. And the natural light lit that up. That's why they didn't do a whole lot at night. They did it during the day, okay? Well, then there was a building in that tabernacle. Remember that? That was divided into two different parts, one-third here and then two-thirds over here. That's where the priests went in and did the duties. Well, in that building, it was covered with badger skins, not only just badger skins, but it was covered in such a way that no natural light could get in there, none at all. You know, and God designed that. You want to know why? Because God had provided light in there. Remember the candlestick that had to have the oil in it? Praise God. What does the Bible say about the word? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Come on, this is what I'm talking about. God has provided you with some light. Come on. You don't have to depend on the natural light all the time. You can get to a place where you have his provided light in your life. Come on, that's why you should be reading your Bible every day. That's why you should be praying the Word. You should allow His Word to become a great influence in your life because it's the provided light. But then there was one step even further, and that was in the Holy of Holies. And yeah, in the Old Testament, not everybody could go in there. But in the New Testament, what was one of the signs? The Bible says when Jesus died, that, that cloth that was thicker than a man's hand was rent from the top to the bottom, showing that God says, come on in to that supernatural light. And that's where faith can begin to operate. If you got the gift of faith in your life, praise God, that's supernatural faith that says, God can do it. I don't care what the circumstances look like. I don't care what they're telling me is going to happen. I know what God's word says, and I can believe that word with that supernatural light. Oh, come on, folks. I'm telling you, this is for you. This is the life that God has designed for you and me. <sighs> but unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, most of us, we just want that, we want that natural light. And that's what we go by. And that's why sometimes we miss the things of God. Learn to operate under the provided light and the supernatural light. And you will begin to see some things and results in your own life. You will begin to see power. Jesus said, we shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Now, the last thing here, and we talked about, first of all, that he's going to lead us through the storms, okay? Second of all, we must recognize that one of the reasons he leads us into the storm is so that our faith will begin to be tested. The Bible uses the term, the trying of your faith worketh patience. And so we must expect that. Now, this is what I'm talking about. we got to learn to expect these things from God, that he's going to allow these things to happen. Amen. And so then we can further go into the fact that Jesus is always there. He never leaves. I don't care what you're going through right now. Jesus is not leaving. Praise God. He is going to stick with you. The Bible says he, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And so here, that's, that's why I'm talking about that relationship that can begin to, to, to have just, oh, tremendous, tre tremendous results on your human, on your mind, praise God. In fact, folks, if you really think about it, you've got to understand that's really where the battleground is. It's in your and my mind. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to have access to our minds. And he wants to begin to influence our thoughts. And boy, when you begin to change your thoughts, I'm going to tell you what happens as a byproduct of that. Your actions begin to change. And believe me, folks, it's going to be, it's, it's, it, it is just something that is absolutely of God and his will in Jesus' name. And so we got to understand that Jesus is always in that boat with us. He doesn't leave, praise God. I'm going to tell you something. He's right there with you right now, sir. He's right there. He hasn't left. He hasn't gone anywhere. You can just hold out your hand right now, and he's right there. Praise God. Oh, my goodness. This place is just filled with faith that is growing right now. That's why I, oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, anything can happen in this place right here tonight on a Wednesday night. Anything can happen in this place. Oh, my goodness. Come on, somebody here, I know you're starting to sense that expectation. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Drink it in, sir. Drink it in. Drink it in, ma'am. Go ahead. Take a long drink. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Come on, while you got those hands up, listen to this. Our faith in God during times of trouble brings us to a new level of understanding of his power. That's what faith in the storm will do. It'll give you a new understanding of how he can do it. And I'll tell you what's another byproduct of that is fear is going to go. Fear is going to go. In fact, the scripture says he didn't give me a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. Come on, that's what you can expect in Jesus' name. Come on, it might take a little work on your hand, on your, on your part, but you can expect that to happen in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God, praise God. Come on, let's remind ourselves. When Jesus rebuked that storm, there came a great calm. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, it was real. It was real. Praise God. Praise God. And Jesus Christ is real in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What a deal. What a deal. Hallelujah. What a deal. Well, another thing that you can understand is that we've got to understand that the fears that you face can be real or imagined. They can. Somebody said one time, I forget what the percentage was, but worry, and I remember reading this, worry, the useless emotion. And they were talking about the fact of how many things that we worry about that actually never come to pass. And it's like 95%. 90 to 95% of the things we really worry about actually never come to pass. But believe me, those are real in your mind. And so we've got to have some way to work this out. You know, we've got to have some way, praise God, that God can help us. Turn in your Bibles with me to the book of 1 John. 1 John, not the gospel, 1 John. And let's, talk, let's look at something here. 1 John chapter number 4. I'm going to go up, I'm going to go um, uh, read a little more, if you don't mind, Sister Jen, if you, if you don't mind. I'm going to start at verse number 15, 1 John 4 and 15, okay? If you don't have a Bible, it's up on the screen now. The Scripture says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he is and he in God. That is a central doctrine, by the way. That was the problem that they had back in Jesus' time. Who, does men, who do men say that I am? So knowing who Jesus is is very, very important. Somebody say amen. Okay, the Bible says in verse 16, and we have known or understood, that's what the word means there, and believed the love that God hath to us. What does the Bible say? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. Somebody give me an amen. Yeah, that, we can believe that, okay? Now, the Bible says in verse 16 also, God is love. He makes his love available to us. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. The scripture says that the, the love of God, and by the way, this love is agape love. This is God's love. This is how he does it, okay? Well, that love is made or shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Ghost. God, by his spirit, gives us lots of his love. Amen. And things can happen when you are, when you are baptized in love. Verse 17, though, it says, Herein is our love made perfect, okay, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. The Bible says in verse number 18, there is no fear in love. Look at that. Wow. That's why we can walk in that type of a relationship with God. Now, I personally don't believe we can do that permanently down here because of the condition we're in. But there's times when we can literally walk in the love of God. And every fear that we ever had in life can vanish just like the day we got out of the tank in Jesus' name. It's gone. Praise God. Now, I'm telling you the truth here, folks. This is how God wants us to live. And I believe that we need to live that way on a regular basis. We need to seek that kind of thing, praise God. The Bible says, but perfect love, somebody say God's love. That's perfect. It says, casteth out fear, because fear hath torment, praise God. The word actually comes from a Greek word that means it punishes you. That's why if you're going to stay up tonight thinking about all the horrible things that are going to happen to you, you're going to be punished. And guess who's doing that? You're doing it to yourself. 
That's why we can't deny these fears. They will come. But now do you understand why God wants to bring you through a storm so that your faith will begin to grow and so that that faith in him will begin to understand that God's not going anywhere. He's going to be there. He is there, praise God. And we can begin to develop a love relationship with him that will cast out every bit of fear that we have. Come on, I'm not talking about just select people. I'm talking about this is the design that God has for every child of God. Come on, that's why you're here tonight. God wants to help that to begin to grow, and he wants to take that perfect love that only he can supply. You can't do it, and I can't do it. That's why I read that thing to myself often. Without him, nothing. I can't do anything without him. But with him, praise God, anything is possible. And I'm not talking about psyching ourselves up, folks. I'm not talking about operating by our feelings. I'm talking about operating by faith that will stay in the name of Jesus. Come on, this is a good thing. This is what God has designed for his church. Oh, hallelujah. When you begin to operate without fear, you begin to become bold. You begin to become, praise God, the, uh, uh, an object or somebody, some, something that God can use for other people in the name of Jesus. You ever seen that happen? You know, this is what I used to when I first came into the church. I mistook it. I thought that some of these preachers were arrogant. And it wasn't arrogance. It wasn't. It was boldness. It was the fact that they'd been with Jesus and they understood that Jesus said it. It's done in the name of Jesus. And what would happen is my faith would begin to grow when I started to see it for really what it was. And that's why I understand people sometimes probably have depicted me as being arrogant. And, folks, that is not the truth. The truth of it is is that when I get behind this, this, this pulpit, praise God, and I begin to get the anointing of the Lord upon me, there's a boldness that comes on me, praise God. And what I want is I want that to be imparted to you, praise God. That's why during my, my whatever you call this, a presentation, I'll stop and let the ministry of God take a hold of you, praise God, just like I've done several times here tonight because you're not going to be the same. Once you get touched by the master's hand, I'm telling you, folks, there's nothing like that in this world. I don't care where you go. You can go to the greatest amusement park in the world. There is not a thrill like knowing that Jesus Christ is in charge and really understanding that that fear is gone. Come on, that fear is gone. I don't have to operate under that kind of an auspices. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So what was the fear that these guys were talking about here? What was the fear? You know, I'll tell you what some of that fear was. They thought that God was going to abandon them. And this is sometimes what we have as a fear, is sometimes we think, well, God's going to take off, you know. No, he's not. I'm here to tell you he's not leaving. If anybody's going to leave, it's going to be you. And that's why we must understand that God wants to help us to really know that, you know, without any shadow of a doubt. And again, that's why God will allow us to go through some things. He will allow us to go through some things so that we can begin to see where we're deficient. And God can help us to begin to be filled up in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. You know, one of the spokesmen that you find in the Bible a lot was this guy named Peter, you know. And Peter, you know, of course, was the guy that said probably what a lot of other people were thinking. You know, that's what I believe anyway. You know, and um, he was pretty boisterous. You know, he was, you know, Lord, they're going, but I'm not. You know, and he was, you know, he, he'd proclaim it, you know. But, you know, I believe that Peter began to learn some things. And let me show you what Peter learned by going through the storm. Turn to the book of First Peter. First Peter, that's the one that he wrote. First Peter chapter number 5. And let me show you something. I, have, I believe that Peter learned by going through that storm. Amen. First Peter, chapter number 5. The Bible says in verse number 5 there, 1 Peter 5 and 5, it says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. It says, For God resisteth the proud, and he giveth grace to the humble. And then he goes on to say, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you or raise you up in due time. Now, verse number seven is what he learned. He said, casting how much? 
all of your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. Now, that's something, folks, that we got to receive by faith. Because a lot of times we look at our behavior, we look at what we do, we, bring, we look at what we bring to the table, and believe me, you know, we can, if we're going to dwell on that, we're going to really have a problem. But when you begin to believe in what God is bringing into the situation, hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you like to have been there? I would have. Wouldn't that have been cool to see those waves just calm down, to see that storm just go away? Wow. I'm telling you something, each and every one of us, God will give us an opportunity to see that. I told you before, when I first started this Bible study tonight, my prayer for, for, for many of you is that you'll begin to see the opportunities that God puts in your life and not view them as something horrible, but view them as something that God is putting in my life that my faith can begin to grow in him. See, Peter... Peter had to learn that. That's why God allowed him to go through some of the storms that he did. That's why when Peter really got down to it, he said, well, I'm just going to go back to what I know. I'm going to be a fisherman. And that's not what God wanted for him. God wanted him to become a spokesman for the church. And that's why Jesus said, when you're converted, you know, you're going to strengthen your brethren. And we understand that same Peter that denied Jesus Christ stood up on the day of Pentecost he stood up in front of the Sanhedrin court. He stood up in front of a lot of opposition and said, hey, we ought to obey God rather than man. I'm telling you something, folks. Peter learned how to cast all of his cares upon the Lord. Why? Because he cares for you. And if you and I can begin to learn that same process, I believe that we're not going to be we're not going to be dictated by fear in our lives. We're going to be dictated by faith, and we're going to begin to follow him, praise God, where exactly he wants us in Jesus' name. Praise God. Peter learned that no matter how stormy your life may be, you can cast your care on the Lord. That's what he learned, praise God. He learned that we can do that. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. I thought this would be something that I could bring to you towards the end of this. You know, worry is the feeling that your fears are going to come to pass. That's what worry is. And then worry is believing that God does not care and that things are going to get worse. Anybody ever been there? Come on, we, we, we go there, don't we? Now, worry takes over when you allow your mind. Now, listen to this. Worry takes over when you allow your mind to dwell on the difficulties or the troubles. That's why probably one of the best things that all of us could learn sometimes, and probably quite often, is learn how to step back. Just step away. I'm going to tell you something, folks. I think that could really help us out a lot. Amen. You know, there are experts out there, and you know what an expert is, don't you? Expert is somebody who carries a briefcase and is 50 miles away from their home. That's an expert. That's what they tell me anyway. But there's experts out there, you know, on the subject of worry. And what they say is that you should never worry alone. That if you find something that's, that comes into your life, the best thing that you can do is you can find somebody, a trusted friend, which Jesus Christ can become, by the way. But find somebody that you can find that you begin to share your concerns with. And I believe that that's one of the reasons why God will bring us into a local church like this, is that sometimes we can develop prayer partners. Now listen to me, I think the best friend you ought to have in your life is Jesus Christ. You've heard me talk about the fact that there are four relationships that God is dealing with me about all the time, you know, and one of those, friend, those relationships is that of a relationship of a friend. I want Jesus Christ to be my friend. Because a friend loves at all times. Amen. A friend will share things with you that some other people won't. And so developing that type of a relationship with God is a good one. But I do believe that there are, there are people that God will lead you to. And sometimes when you feel that spirit coming on, what you need to do is you need to find people that are going to help you to get through it. Not people who are going to throw gasoline on the fire. But people who are going to help you, th help you get through it. 
And I believe that God provides that, praise God. Because I'm going to tell you something. The Bible teaches us that we are overcomers. And one of the things about our faith getting tested is the fact that our, our, our overcoming faith will help us to overcome worry in Jesus' name. And I believe tonight there's somebody in here tonight that you're beginning that journey. And I believe that God's going to help you with that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, praise God. I'm telling you something, folks. It's real. And, that, and, and you can begin to depend on it in Jesus' name. Let's stand tonight. Talked about a lot of things here. I mean, there's a lot of things that we could go into. But I'm here to tell you tonight that that overcoming power is here and it's available in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Let's begin to lift up our hands and our voices. And let's begin to let our let ourselves be be just 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 give it to the Lord, if I can just put it that way. Just give it to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. All through this service tonight, I have felt I have felt the faith begin to lift and begin to grow in people's lives. And I think that's a good thing. Rightly said, this lesson is abundant faith. This is what God wants you to have in him, in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, touch every one of these people tonight, Lord God. My prayer is that, again, they'll never, ever be the same again. That through your gifts, through your givings, Lord God, that they'll be able to overcome the things that are trying to put them down in their lives right now, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't you do this? Why don't you go and, 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 and if you're comfortable walking over to somebody right now or being with somebody, let's share that right now. Let's lay our hands on somebody right now and let's begin to pray for them. Yes, there it is. There it is. The ministry of the saints. I love it. I love it. Impart something unto them tonight. Help them, oh, Father. Yes. Oh, that's right. Feel that building? Isn't that something? The Bible says we can pray one for another that we may be healed. I believe even here in the last few mi last minute of this service, there's a healing that can take place. There's a power that can take place in your life that can make all the difference in the next coming week. In Jesus' name. That's beautiful. There is some tremendous ministry happening right here, right here, right now. In Jesus' name. Oh, what a beautiful thing. Oh, blessed be to the name of the Lord. That's right. That's right, sir. Receive that. Just receive that from the Lord. Let him speak to you. Let him do the things that he wants to do for you in, his, in your life right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're doing. Oh, bless these people. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. Come on. We can linger just a little bit longer. It's not quite quarter after yet, so we can just give this a little bit more time. Oh, something's happening in the spiritual realm. Somebody's being let loose. Somebody's being set free. Oh, hallelujah. There it is, man. It's that easy. Recognize that. Come on, there's even a little bit of a calm that's come into your life right now. Come on, God wants you to recognize that. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, what a deal. Come on, I'm telling you, this is God. That's the way it should be. Oh, in the name of Jesus. See it? It's rising again. Come on, something's happening right here in the name of Jesus. Beautiful, beautiful. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. That's right, that abundant faith. Amen. That can, that can tear down walls. That can, that can bring forth healings, that can allow that devil just to take a walk in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, 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 in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your abundant faith in Jesus' name. Let's thank him together one more time. Can we do that? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Lord bless you folks. Thanks for coming out tonight. Hopefully this has been a blessing in your life and will stay a blessing. Yes.